been banging out the same old boring chords at the piano, it's time to shake things up. I'm gonna show you five simple tricks to upgrade your basic triads into hip chords that'll work great for jazz, R&B, and gospel. And no, we're not gonna be talking about altered dominant tritone substitution polychords today. We're focusing on practical, easy to apply techniques that can transform your piano playing right away. Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here, back again with more chord theory and soloing tips for jazz, R&B, and gospel musicians. Today we're gonna to be working with a super simple chord progression. It's gonna be F major, B flat major, C major, back to F major. And by the end of this video, we're gonna figure out how to turn it from that into this. So much more interesting, but it's the same three chords. Well, almost the same. Let's get into it. The first thing we're gonna to do to upgrade these triads is add the two. So we're gonna go from this basic F major to F major with that added two. The G there is the two. It's also known as the nine. If you play up the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. By the way, if you're having any trouble figuring out what the two or the nine is, I have this chart. It's called the last chord scale chart you'll ever need. And it's completely free. You can download it in the link below. It's a really, really helpful resource for figuring out what the nine is, or if you're working with seventh chords, it has the major keys, it has the minor keys, everything that you could possibly need. So check that out in the link. Anyway, we can do the same thing with the B flat major chord. Instead of B flat major like this, we've got B flat major like this. There's the two. And again, with the C major chord adding the D. And you can add that two in there like it's part of the chord, or you can use it as a grace note. This is a nice technique. It's got a poppy sound to it. Grace note meaning I'm going quickly from the two up to the three. Now it sounds like I said a little bit like a pop tune here, but we're gonna transform it into something a little bit more sophisticated as we add these other tips. So let's keep going. The next tip is one you might already know, but we're gonna put a twist on it. It also sets the foundation for the remaining tips, so it's really important we cover it. So when I played this chord progression the first time, and it sounded really basic like that, it's because all of the chords were in root position, meaning I had the, the root in the bottom voice. So what we're gonna do now is invert the chords. We're gonna work with what's called inversions. And I'm gonna put a twist on this and call it melodic inversions. I'll explain why in a second. So if you're not familiar, an inversion is when you take the same three notes of a chord and rearrange them on the piano. So it's the same three notes, just in a different order. One way to think of it is taking the bottom note and placing it on the top of the voicing. You can do it again bottom note goes on the top. And you can do that with each of the chords. And then on C major. Now, as I said, this is an extremely important thing to be able to do because you can take a clunky sounding chord progression like this and make it much smoother. You hear the difference? much smoother, also easier to play because I don't have to move my hand around on the piano as much. And as I said, I like to put a little twist on this and have you thinking about them in terms of melodic inversions. What that means is you think about what the top note of the voicing is. So if I play F major like this, I have F in the top voice. If I play B flat major like this, I have D in the top voice. You have to remember that that note in the top voice, that top note of each chord is going to imply a melody. Whether it's the melody of the song or not, it's still going to imply a melody. So you wanna be aware of what melody you're implying when you're playing your chord voicings. If I play this, the melody I'm implying is, and then I can continue up from there. That's the implied melody. Keep that in mind as you're working with your inversions. So we talked about adding that two or that nine to add some more color to the chords, and we used inversions to help smooth out the chord progression as we go from chord to chord. The third tip we're gonna to cover today is one of my favorites. It's where we take an F major chord like this in what's called closed position and open it up, meaning we're gonna take this middle note right here and move it down the octave. Now what if we have an inversion of the chord? Here's F major and first inversion. Let's take the middle note and move it down the octave. This sounds really cool when you start combining these open voicings with those inversions that we just talked about. So here's the whole progression, F major, B flat major, C major, F major, with some inversions and some open voicings. Check this out. If we were gonna use closed voicings, it would sound like this. Not bad. It's smooth because we used inversions, but again, when you open it up, it's a big upgrade from how those closed position chords sound. All right, on to tip number four. Similar to tip number three, but a different way of thinking about it that I think is gonna be really helpful. So that F major chord, right? If we add 
the left hand in there, giving us a little bit of a, of a bass. What we can do is play an alternate note in the bass. And that means playing any one of the other chord tones from that F major chord. So if I want to do F major over A, it would sound like this. Or F major over C would sound like this. Each one of these variations has a different color, a different feel to it. By the way, when I put the third in the bass, when I put that A in the bass on F major, I don't usually double or play that third again in my right hand. It's just a little voicing trick that is really helpful for making those, those chords with the third in the bass sound as, as good as possible. Alternate note in the bass trick really comes in handy when you're composing or reharmonizing because what you can do is take that simple chord progression and let's say you don't want it to sound so final when you get to the end of the song. This is a very short song, but what if I end with this chord? Now it sounds like there's more to come. So use these alternate notes in the bass to help with pacing. And as you play and experiment with them more and more, you'll become more familiar with the colors that each alternate bass note gives that chord. And it'll be easier for you to, to know which color you wanna use in your, in your music. Now, before we go to our final tip, I wanna let you know that if you do wanna learn more about the more complex music theory that goes along with jazz and R&B and gospel music, you're gonna love my course, Chord Theory for R&B Piano. It works great for jazz and, and neo soul and all of the music that makes use of sevenths and ninths and flat thirteens and tritone substitution and crazy reharmonization techniques. I teach all of it in chord theory for R&B piano. I take you step by step. It's actually really easy to learn this stuff if you learn it in a, in a sequence like I've arranged in the course. So you can learn more about that course in the link below, but let's get on to our final chord hack of the day. All right, tip number five, this is where the magic happens. We're now gonna combine all the other tips we've learned and we're gonna go from this to this. All right, so I'm gonna break that down. We've got F major, bring the middle note down an octave, add the nine. Let's do the same voicing on B flat major. Middle note, down the octave, add the nine. Now, for the C major, we've got this. And then to finish off, we're gonna use that grace note technique, going from the two to the three of F major. This is an F major, in an open voicing. By the way, I forgot to mention, you can also add that two or that nine on minor chords. Here it is on D minor. There's the two, you get that really nice cluster there. All right, let's do one more variation where we use all these tricks. Check this out. So we've got F add nine over A, that's the technical name for this chord, but again, it's just F major, bring the middle note down, put that third in the bass, add the two. Go to B flat major, this is an open voicing, and I did that two to three grace note there. Now I have C major over E, got the third in the bass, followed by F major, the root in the bass, open voicing, two to three grace note. Really nice. Now guys, if you really wanna see me push the envelope on transforming a simple song into something way more interesting and complex, check out this video here where I reharmonize Amazing Grace six different ways and each time it gets crazier and crazier until by the end I'm using all kinds of wild chord progressions and chord extensions and lots of cool stuff. So check that out and thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.